Okay, how are you doing today, Barry? I'm good, how are you? Fantastic, fantastic. I'm um, excited to talk about your newest movie, um, The Way Out. Uh, and I was curious, to begin with, how did you come up with that name, the title of the film? And were there any other titles that you had considered when you were putting this together? Yes, I'm laughing because of the title I originally had and what I went through to get to the title. It's a very good question with a, I'll make it a, a quick answer. When I wrote this, and you have to understand, as much as I love horror movies and Disney, I am sort of a PG rated guy. I rarely am. I just, it, my mind doesn't go to some places that other people's go. And I called it aroused um, because I thought he had woken up something in Johnny and, and Johnny and Alex, you know, it was all about waking up, finding yourself. And then it took my producers to explain that other people might take it another way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially oh, with the context. I, was, of the I thought I had the greatest title because of the awakening thing. Um, so. I happen to be reading, I forget what I was reading, um, but I am sober and, and I'm in sobriety. And I was reading that the original title of the big book about Wallace Anonymous was supposed to be The Way Out. And somewhere I know in the book, it actually says, you know, it helped me find the way out. Hmm. Um, so a, that was it. Once I said that to Mike, you know, it was Mike. Um, I was on Zoom with him. And, and he was, you know, saying, you know, can you just try to think of other titles and let's like see what we can think of. And um, and when I said that, he said, that's it. That's it. That's perfect. So he loved the reasoning behind it and all that. And I was like, OK, cool. Um, coincidentally, somewhere in the movie, his character says the way out. And I had put that in there before changing the title or even knowing about it. That is that is a fun coincidence. Um I want to know about uh, what kind of inspired you to write this. I know you said that you are in sobriety. Um, so I imagine that it's at least partially based on you, you, you yes. yourself. Yes. Um, another good question. So I am a survivor of some pretty bad childhood trauma. Um, anything from bullying to being mistreated at home, uh, you know, and abuse is very lonely, you know, um, for me it was because I'm sort of, I can't tell anyone, I can't, no one's helping me, you know, I ended up isolating and, you know, so I, I, I think when I started to become a writer, things started coming out, you know, gotcha. and I, what was all pent up started to find its way out. You felt like you were being a little more honest with yourself? Yes. But... Now, it took a couple of movies to get me there. I, I wasn't ready, to be honest. And then once I had written a couple of movies and directed them, I thought, I know what I want to do for the next one. I'm either going to be brave enough and face this. And this is my deep, dark secret. This is the biggie. This is the mothership of dark secrets. And I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm I'm tired of walking around with it with no positive purpose it was a very negative thing and for me the movie helped it become a positive in my life um, and i think it's i think it's interesting because you know from what you're saying it's also it was your way out yes it yeah. absolutely was getting sober was absolutely my way out of course there's years of therapy looking at the trauma and all that uh, but nothing's helped as much as being sober, being, being sober and gaining clarity and growing up, to be honest, because, you know, once you're abused at a certain age, you, for me, I can only speak for myself, um, kind of stop maturing, you know, so <laughs> I just always felt like a bad kid, you know? Yeah, me too. I feel you. Yeah. So it was, it was very cathartic. The house we shot in was a replica of the house I grew up in in the same area I grew up in, in the Hudson Valley. So that was a little trippy, but I wanted authenticity because I thought, this is it. This is this is my story. I want to stick close to it as I can and still leave escapism like the character Shane, 
you know, get my message across, hopefully in an entertaining revenge thriller type way. But Alex really represents a lot of my lifespan put into the age of like 25. So with the characters, you know, there's multiple characters and they're so different. Which do you see this movie through or when you were writing, who were you seeing through the lens of? You know, that's a really really good question, because Alex is our protagonist. And I'll be honest, when I was writing, and this happens to me occasionally, and it definitely did with The Way Out, it's easier to see my life through others' eyes. So because Alex was sort of representing me, it was much easier to view this world through Shane's eyes. It was much easier to look at some of the some of the world through Veronica and Gracie's eyes, through sponsor and friend. Maybe because that's how my life is, outside coming in, dealing with the crazy, and then I I listen to the voices of reason, unlike Alex does sometimes in the movie. <laughs> and um Do you feel like so that helps you a lot? Mainly it was Shane. And I think Shane stemmed from my anger when I was younger. I don't have any more. I actually believe in the power of forgiveness. But so I think a lot of it was through Shane's eyes. It was easier to look at myself through someone else's eyes. Yeah. Do you feel like, uh, you know, looking through those different lenses at a version of yourself, do you feel like that helped you at all with your, your forgiveness that you've come to? Oh, yes. I mean, there's honestly the forgiveness thing. It's like having, you know, Shane on one shoulder and Veronica and Gracie on the other. You got the angel and the devil. <laughs> they both have convincing arguments, you know, and and ultimately one leads down a dark path and one leads to a freer, lighter life. You know, it's not like it fixed anything. I don't forgive the behavior. Or I don't forgive the actions that happened to me, but I forgive the person, you know, I forgive my dad, I forgive my family, I forgive the bullies, you know, I had to, because I was also not perfect. And once I was not sober, I was really not. perfect. <laughs> and um, in order to forgive myself, it felt unfair to not forgive others and forgive myself it felt almost impossible. So that's, that's where it came from. So where did you when did you decide to put the quote that was at the beginning of the film? Um, that before okay. the film, before the film started. Um, in one of the programs that I was getting recovery in, um, I had a sponsor, and it was his favorite quote, and it just stayed with me. Like the first time we met in the park and read the book together, um, he told he mentioned that quote, and it just stuck with me because. It's a reflection of my whole life. It's so true. I kept it down and down and down and down. It came out in very ugly ways. And the only way to get it out was honesty and forgiveness, you know? So I just thought that quote belonged in the beginning because it fits so well. Yeah, and I think writing in general is a good good tool for healing and when that's your passion. Um, So it's really cool that you had kind of made this about you, but I'm curious that if there are any major differences between you and the main character of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm bad. With Way that. out. It's okay. <laughs> no, the, the main character, what was his name? Oh, Alex, 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 Alex Romero. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. I mean, to be honest, when I first started writing him because he was me, he was this nebbishy, I mean, I'm super nebbishy, Jewish kid, you know, um, and clearly um, Johnny Beauchamp is not that. But when he read the script and he demanded to meet me on Zoom that day, I knew it was him. I just knew. But um, there's a lot of similarities as far as we both grew up in Rockland County in the Hudson Valley. And that is just weird because the first thing he said to me is, why do you have cities like Nyack listed in your script? And I'm like, because I'm from there. He's like, I'm from there. <laughs> so there was that, that one really fun coincidence that we grew up in the same environment and he understood the surroundings. And, but he's also a phenomenal actor. And he, he, the way he was talking about Alex, he understood. He understood the anger. He understood the, the shame. 
he ended, uh, you know, the desire to get well, the, the, the inability to stay well, you know, so the honesty, I mean, all of that is in common with, you know, me, um, the character, because that's all the stuff I had to go through. But Johnny really breathed life into Alex, a beautiful life into Alex. Um, he actually gave a little bit more dignity than I had. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, there were two very different arcs between Shane and um, is it Johnny? Johnny, Alex, yeah. Uh, yeah, Alex, sorry. That's all right. Between Alex and Shane, I just had brain surgery like six weeks ago. So, oh dear, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually better. They had to remove the scar my dad put there, so I could uh, not have seizures anymore. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and everything is good now, and you're. Yeah, everything's everything is great now, but I thank God it's not about me. Um, <laughs> be, between the um. Alex and Shane, they have very different arcs. So I am curious to know um, when did you decide when you, while you were writing this, was this, uh, was Shane's arc already in your mind from the beginning of your, of your like spark of inspiration to write this? Yeah, I knew what Shane's MO was going to be, you know, I, I knew where he was coming from and I knew his backstory, but he also represents, even though he's a hundred percent fictitious, um, he represents what, all right. So I went to therapy once I've had many therapists and one therapist once said something to me that just stuck with me. And she said, after hearing my growing up story she said wow it's amazing you turned out to be a nice person that could have ended really differently and i was like huh and if you look at you know the history of killers and whatnot and and and, and crime people and there's always like abuse and neglect and all that kind of stuff 99 percent of the time so i got it and i thought to myself maybe shane can represent what could have happened and alex represents what happened and they both go down a different road with different outcomes. I really like the uh, quote that was in the movie that had said, you know, you're not responsible for the disease, but you are responsible for the um, recovery. recovery. Yeah. And so um, that kind of, I feel like that kind of parallels the, what you were just saying about the um <laughs> sorry no no you're good uh about kind of, the different roads and yeah 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 well and about how you know you look at people like well they were abused you know they right. abused me they were abused but that's their responsibility yes. to to heal overcome that and yeah. not, and like uh uh shane had said to the the one guy he had met um he had said um uh, you know he said uh because the guy was like well my dad abused me and he was like oh then you should have known better yeah then you should have yeah. known better <laughs> so yes i felt like I mean, that yes. kind of that kind of parallel because he should have known better um because yeah. his dad was responsible for taking taking Right. If we don't take responsibility for our healing, we're just going to keep abusing it forward. Yeah. Um, that's a great way to put it. I wanted to note, sorry, I made a couple notes here. Um, I love all your Spider-Man stuff. One of our producers, Nick Thur, is a Spider Man holic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, we love all this. I. Oh, I I wanted to know. This is a kind of a, a little bit of a silly question, but all the cop cars and everything that had showed up when they found when um, Alex found his 
father dead towards the beginning i was curious how like how did you get manage to get a hold of those did you like get a hold of the police station and then they helped you or were they yes different diff okay is the short answer but i can tell you i don't honestly know the entire procedure because speak of, speak of nick um one of the producers nick had done a movie there called slap face like a year prior and they he had a working relationship with the with the enforcement so it was great. I mean, all I know is I showed up that day and there's ambulances and cops and I'm like, wow, Nick, <laughs> you don't, you don't play. <laughs> um, now with Shane bringing, uh, when, when Alex came home and found Shane with, um, the woman, what did Shane choose a black woman specifically to make Alex even more jealous because he had, you know, he made the comment about like you had your own, you have your own little girlfriend. Yeah, I, I got you have your girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Is I that, didn't know if that was like to me. Oh, or, or I like, didn't even think of it. No, she was a client of one of the producers and she did a reading and I thought she was phenomenal. <laughs> she had such a great look. She did a lot with a little in that scene. And, yeah. um, and I come from a mixed family, so I don't even think of those things, to be honest. Um, <laughs> she was just the right one for the role. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you know, with Shane's mind being so kind of yeah. all over the place, I wasn't sure if that was that was a specific tool that he was trying no, to use no. this tool about. It, I, well, I can't give away the ending, so, but there's something he says at the end that makes you know that he's been with her a while. This is not just a one night now the the blood the fake blood um can i ask what you used to create that like when he found his father oh so i don't know i don't know i i know i got to see how it looked and say okay but i i don't know what it was made out of we had a makeup person i'm not that i love it <laughs> i love horror makeup but i i actually don't know what he, what concoction he used to make it look like blood and I've done three movies in a row with blood now, so <laughs> I should probably learn. <laughs> Obviously, you had a casting director, but did you have any um, any experience with or knowledge of the, any of the cast members, like Sherry Shepard or the uh, rest of the ensemble? Mike and Sherry needed no casting director. One of our producers knew Sherry's we we're looking for somebody in the school of Sherry. She was sort of the prototype. Um, my my sponsor was an older woman, you know, and um, not much older. I mean, Sherry's not that old. <laughs> um, so just uh, he gave he gave the script to her agents, and then when she read it, she was just all in. And I was like, wow, she gets it. She saw the layers in it. She loved the character. And so that's how we got Sherry, uh, very fortunately, because she's phenomenal. Mike, the, one of the first producers on, took me to Nick and Mike. And Nick and Mike produced together. They did that slap face movie together. Um, and we were just dealing as producers. They were going to be producers. And then one day with Zoom with Nick, and Mike wasn't there, Mike said he's getting busy with some stuff. He has to go tend to that, and he'll circle back. Well, while he was doing that, I said to Nick, has Mike ever mentioned wanting to be Shane? He goes, he hasn't mentioned it, but I can ask him if you want me to. I'm like, yeah. He has a very different Shane than I had written. But just like I wrote a Nebuchadnezzar Jewish kid and I knew it when I saw Johnny, I just knew it. I just felt like, ask, he would be great. He would be really, really great. And it's one of my better decisions in my life because he's so phenomenal, Shane. And so he came on board. He moved himself to EP, executive producer. And as he wanted to focus on the role, he gained 13 pounds of muscle. He um, got like to a pro level of boxing. Um, he really dove into the character and the layers of it. it he did a phenomenal job. I feel very, very lucky. Did you have, <clears throat> did you have, uh, when you wrote the original character, you said there were differences between him and Shane. 
like Shane obviously had like a specific physique and you know specific motivations can I ask what what the character of Shane in the original script was like sure honestly when I was writing him it's easy it was Ryan Reynolds and Emily Villara <laughs> it was this big hairy muscular guy with a beard who's super intimidating <laughs> <laughs> then he walks in the room you're like oh ooh. <laughs> you don't know like super hot super scary <laughs> But Mike was boy next door, but intense and a wonderful actor. Um, you know, when you got an itch and just got to scratch it, after talking with Mike a few times, that itch wouldn't go away. I just had to ask, you know, and I'm very, very glad I did. It's not at all the look that I was writing, but that's okay. I mean, you're always writing, you know, <laughs> gotta be open minded. <laughs> I wanted to compliment you on just a couple of things. I loved that you included the abuse message at the end. And I also loved that you, um, ma you know, made a movie with uh, such prominent homosexuals as part of the LGBTQ community myself. Um, so, you know, I think that that helps normalize, normalize things. <laughs> And where it's due, um, again, Mike and, and Nick had that from the movie they worked on, and they thought it would be really smart to put it at the end of this movie because we're taking this topic so seriously. I mean, it's a revenge thriller, but what happens to Alex is is not fictional. And um, yeah. So you um, obviously have done a lot of projects. You probably have a lot of projects coming up. So before we wrap, I just want to do give you a chance to either say anything about the movie that we didn't touch on or plug any of your other projects. Well, it comes out tomorrow from Terror Films. Um, it'll be available on Apple TV, Amazon, and Tubi to start with many others coming. Um, I'm working on a Christmas movie with my husband, um, and I'm working on a, um, a serial killer film called Like Father, Like Son which will, um, I'm looking to do that with Terror Films. But that's that's what's in the works right now. So there's always something in the works, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so that tomorrow, uh, just in case, I, I'm not sure if this video we put, will be posted today for sure, but uh, tomorrow, just to, so everybody is clear, is February 9th, Thursday. Um, so if you're watching this on Thursday, than it is today so just to clarify that make sure you check it out and uh you guys um hopefully right. we'll get we'll get the great messages that are in it about abuse and homosexuality and a number of other things um i appreciate your time uh, i think that's going to be everything for us so I'm going to go ahead and wrap them. I uh, Hopefully we'll talk again in the future about your future. I would love movie. that. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me again. And happy healing. I just, <laughs> I just hope it all goes nice and smooth. And I'm so glad you're good. Thank you. Thank you.